Well, welcome to my studio today. I'm starting on a new painting for my gallery in the Napa Valley. It's in Yachtville, which is at the southern end of the valley, and Gallery 1870 is just a wonderful, wonderful gallery. They're in an old building that was part of a winery, and it's just, oh, it's just delightful. There's lots of shops and stuff in there, and the owners are fabulous people. We've worked for, with them for years, and just a pleasure to do business with. This painting I showed you, the ske it's sketched up on my canvas. It's a 16 inch by 16 inch. It's done on a gallery wrap canvas and the image will go around the sides of the canvas. I begin painting with the sky. This is a mixture of white plus cobalt blue. And I go ahead and paint on the top of the canvas. And around the sides. I start with my cobalt blue plus white at the very top of the canvas. It's a little bit darker. Then I've got another mixture of blue, which is, just make sure that's good and covered up there. Okay, then my next mixture is phthalo blue plus white. This is a little bit lighter. The sky, as it goes overhead, the dome of the sky gets darker. As it comes closer to the earth, the sky becomes lighter and a little bit warmer or greener. So that's why I'm using the phthalo blue plus white as, as we get down closer to the tops of the mountains. And I go, even though I'm going to have clouds in here, I'm going to go ahead and paint my blue field. Because then when I paint the clouds over, the blue that softens the edges and makes them nice and fluffy. I want your sky to be soft because you want it to go back. Soft edges go back, hard edges come forward, so that helps to give the feeling of depth or distance in your painting. Now this transition here, I just want to kind of feather them into each other. Now the sun is coming in from the upper right, so the clouds will be lit on the right sides of the clouds. There's a little gunk in that, just a little chunk of paint there I want to get up. Sometimes your paint and the tubes will even have little, the whites seem, sometimes have little chunks in them and you have to just pick those out of the, the paint. So I start with my cloud color. This is the shadow and this is my mud plus white. And the mud is a mixture with two parts ultramarine blue and um, somebody asked me is your ultramarine blue French ultramarine blue and yes it is. And it's two parts of the ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson. And that makes a nice soft purple. Then this is that mixture plus a little more white plus some alizarin crimson in there. Just gives a little pink touch to those clouds. And some more of that shadow there. Come around the side just a little bit there. And a little color there. Now I keep cleaning my brush the secret to nice, clean, pretty color on your canvas is a clean brush. So I'm constantly wiping my brush out, particularly when painting lighter colors, because the brush will pick up some of the underneath color and get dirty. See how that picked up some of that blue? So I want to wipe my brush out. And I just use regular toilet tissue for that. These, just, this is made just very, very soft. Then I'm going to come back with some of my little pinker mixture and soften those edges. Again, we want the sky to be soft. We want it just to fall back into the distance. Now taking a clean brush, I, I clean my brush out in the thinner and then wipe it out so it's very dry. I pull my blue 
into the clouds. And that softens them even more. Again, I wipe my brush. If you don't wipe your brush, then you're going to pull some of that dirty color up into your blue sky. And you're going to have to start all over. Then I just bring a little more white. Or my lighter color. This lighter color is again that pink mixture plus more white and just a touch of cadmium orange in there. A little, little, few little soft little puffs of clouds extend up into the blue of the sky. You kind of just work back and forth. I'm going to have trumpet vine coming down in here, so I'm not worried about the sky right there. I'm going to clean my brush out. Come back and pull some of this blue down in here. Didn't like that little white there, the light. And then I come back along the horizon and add a few little holes into the clouds. Again, that adds to the airiness in the sky. And a little bit over here. Yeah, I don't like that. So I can just come back with my dark. And there we go. I want this dark so that the light hitting the trumpet vine, really those trumpet vine, that orange, bright orange, will just glow against that little darker. And I am going to take a little bit of my cobalt blue and just come over a little, a little bit further where that trumpet vine is going to go. So there's our sky. Now I paint forward. In other words, I begin with the most distant part of the, build, the painting, which is the sky, and then I work forward. Now I'll begin working on the mountains. And this is a mixture of my ultramarine blue plus a little mud plus some white. I want the most distant mountain to be bluer or cooler so that it recedes. Blues go back. The cool colors, blues, soft greens, cool greens, bluer greens. Warmer colors come forward. Now I bring this all the way around the, go ahead and go all the way around the edge. A little smaller brush. I'm going to come back in and I want to bring my clouds down here. So this mountain is going to go behind the other one. So I'm just going to bring my clouds down a little bit. Oops, too much, too much paint there. Again, I want those clouds to remain very soft. Now I come back. I take an even a smaller brush. This is a clean brush. Make sure it's good and dry. And I come back and I pull over this edge in the distance, of the, the top edge of that mountain, because I want it to be soft. I want it to go back. I can almost just pull some of that color. I keep wiping my brush to keep it clean. Put a little chunk of paint in there. side. And that softens. When we get the painting done, those softer, when I get all the hard edges and the bright warm colors up front, that's really going to make that fall back. Now at the base of this mountain, somebody asked me, how do I give the feeling of that mist in between the mountains? Because in a valley you'll see the mountains, there just seems to be a mist hanging down there. I'm just taking some of that cobalt blue color and I'm just painting over that wet paint down in the lower edge of this, this far mountain. And that's going to fall in between those mountain ridges. In fact, I can just go ahead. Now, cleaning my brush. 
Again, make sure it's good and dry. Just come back and soften that a little bit. You don't want it totally blended in because you do want that feeling of mist, but I do want to, soft, want to soften it just a little bit. So you can feel there's a definite, definite color difference there. Now, this closer ridge is a little bit warmer, so I've mixed a little bit of phthalo blue plus a little cadmium orange into my mud mixture of the back mountain. And we'll start making this. And I'll have some variation in this mountain because it's closer so that you'll see some of the variations of the dips and all within the mountain. But even this mountain's going to be lighter at the base because that mist comes through up through the valley. my valley line there. I'm going to have trees in here, but they'll, they'll, you'll see some of this through the trees. Make that edge around there. And I'm even going to paint some of the color from that back mountain and put into this one. That helps just tie the two together a little bit. Now we want to bring that mist up and I'm going to use some of that little pinkish cloud color from the sky and let's I just work this in to my base of this mountain. I want this mist to be a little bit warmer because the sun's kind of hitting it. And you can see how that just gives the feeling of that mist. And it's working wet into wet. Particularly in the early morning, that mist just hangs in the valleys. You've never been to the Napa Valley, it's an experience. It's just, oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. So that's how I paint the sky and that mist in between the mountains that just hovers in between the mountains. And that also, that's called atmospheric perspective. And that also helps give the feeling of depth in your painting. This line's a little, that little light's a little hard, so I'm going to just soften that just a little bit. I'm do a little bit more, just right in here. I want a little variation in these hills. Don't want a lot of detail, but want a little bit because it's coming forward. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and soften also that top of that mountain, just a tiny bit. Again, I just take a clean brush and just very lightly drag over the top of that. You just kind of let your brush hover over the paint. You don't dig in because you'll pull that paint up. Just kind of very lightly drag over that. So much of getting the different effects in a painting is how you how you handle your brush. I'm coming back in and adding a little bit more mist in here. Again, that's my cobalt blue plus white mixture. See, you can see that gives a feeling that something's back down behind that front ridge. Now these clouds are a little bit hard right here, those edges. So I can just take a clean brush and, and pull them. This is a little... 
It's pushing you just go back and forth. But there we go. We've got the most distant mountains, we've got the sky, and we have our front mountain, and I'm going to add just a little, little white or light clouds in here. There we go. I just felt like we needed one there. That needs to, that blue didn't quite cover there. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Also visit my blog where I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of my YouTube video. You can subscribe to my blog also. Just go to the upper right corner of the page and um, of the home page of the blog and there's a place to say, it says sign me up. And you can just put your email address in there. So I appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And just remember, today is a great day to have a great day.